What is the Android layout? What are the important ones to master? What are deprecated to void? How to use the constraint layout in Dameron.Android? Find out in today's video. Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing today? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about Android layouts. We're going to start with what is the layout? And then I'm going to share about my opinions. What to master, what to learn, and what to avoid in year 2022. This is going to save you time to avoid learning those deprecated layouts and instead putting your time onto the key ones. I'm going to use the Android Studio primary in this video because it provides the best layout editor. And then toward the end of the video, I am going to share with you how to port over those layouts into Dameron for .NET developers. Let's get started. What is the layout? Imagine your phone screen as a canvas. And when we build the user interfaces, we're going to put the different widgets into different places on the canvas, just like drawing a picture. Those widgets, like a button, an image, they are called a view. Under the hood, there is a structure. It holds the information. Where does those view or view groups go? And that structure is called a layout. There are all sorts of layouts. Some relatively new, like a constraint layout, a coordinator layout. And then there are some traditional ones, like relative layout, linear layout, frame layout. Each layout provides its unique way to organize the views inside it. It could be a little bit overwhelmed especially for people newly into the area. So next, I'm going to go over different layouts that you are going to encounter when coding on Android. And depends on the usefulness, I'm going to grade them into to master, to know, or to avoid. The first one that I want to introduce you to is this uh, constraint layout. It is a funny name. Because this layout is one of the most flexible layouts. This is also the layout that is highly recommended by Google to use for complex UI design. It has a great, if not the best, editor experience. Like for example, you can put a button here at any place on the screen. And then we can say constrain it to the left of the screen. And then if I want to center the button, I just constrain the right to the right side of the screen as well. You can set the bias there to the left or to the right in percentage. When we have a second view, we can create a constraint from one view to the other. We can also align them by adding well left to the left and right to the right. There are just so many possibilities. It performs well too because with constraint layout, you barely need to nest things and the flat hierarchy leads to better performance. So this is a layout you want to spend time to learn, to play around, to master. Now, let's take a look at another very popular layout, relative layout. This one describes relationships relative to one another. For example, if you have an image, and let's say if you want to center it horizontally, you said this uh, layout center horizontal. That's an expression for the relationship in between the view and the parent layout. Let's pull in a button. If I want to put it to the bottom of the image, I'm going to set this property layout below and then pick the image. Now I want to align the center of the button and the image. I could have cheated it use the same layout center horizontal property. It reaches the goal. It is less ideal because uh, if I move the image off the center, the button won't automatically go with it. And quickly, we become very creative. For example, to wrap these two components into another layout, like a frame layout or a linear layout that I'm going to introduce in a bit. With the effort, we're going to reach the goal. The problem is we end up with a very complex hierarchy and deep hierarchy usually leads to lower performance. 
So how can we build the layout that we want without slowing down the app? Convert it to a constrained layout. And this is how you do it. Okay, so what do we do with the relative layout thing? I think we should retire it. If you encounter it in the existing code base, try convert it to the constraint layout. And if you're building new, I would not invest in relative layout too much. So this is one of those that you need to know, but you don't have to master. Now let's look into another do not need to master kind of layout, frame layout. This is like a photo frame. It allows you to work conveniently with the four edges. And it is very convenient for BOs to stack up on one another. One typical usage is for you to have a picture as a background. Then use the layout gravity to put it to some intended place, like central horizontal or central vertical. And then you might want to put some text over the picture. Let's say make it to the bottom and center it horizontally. Add some margin to the text. Then you set the height for the layout to wrap content. It feels like you have a compose of the text on top of the picture. And you can grab the whole layout nest it into something like a relative layout, and build a comprehensive UI out of it. That is the frame layout. The learning curve for the layout is okay-ish. You might find it useful in some special occasions. I think this also could be replaced by the constraint layout actually. So for example, For frame layout, similar to relative layout, learn about it, know it, but that's enough. Okay, so is there any layout that I would not recommend you to directly convert to constraint layout? Well, probably no, but if there has to be one, it's going to be this linear layout. This is a layout that allows you to put views side by side and you can choose the orientation to be horizontal or vertical. This layout is widely used when you have a small portion of views together to be repeated. So for example, you have an image as an icon, and then you put text to the side of it, and then you bind it to a view module on the background to form a list of them. And if you happen to know recycler view already, you must see it to be inflated and used as a repeating unit. As you can see, the usage is very simple. Just throw in the views that you want to be there, and then align them accordingly. We leverage the weight to decide like how much space will one view take up. I haven't recommended to convert this to constraint layout yet, but it's not because there's the something that the constraint layout cannot do. It's only because this layout is so simple. What would make it complex is to make it two lines of text rather than one.
This is when nesting happens. Consider constraint layout. For example, see it's so simple that the editor just handles everything for us. How flat the hierarchy is. And uh, let's have some fun to do that from scratch. That's pretty much what we want. I think there is a little to no learning curve to the linear layout. For an existing code base, I wouldn't jump right in and converting every piece of linear layout to constraint layout. But if there's a deep nest scenario, go ahead and do the conversion. Last but not least, well, it is the least. Absolute layout. Uh... I don't know what to say about it. Just avoid it. Don't learn it. Don't touch it. It's officially deprecated. It's not going to waste your time. If you really, really want some justification, which, by the way, you don't, but if you do, thinking about how many resolutions that you need to deal with for Android screens with a fixed coordinator system. And that's all I have to say. I have been showcased the layout designer in Android Studio for quite a while. This is still a .NET channel, and I am still going to talk about Xamarin, specifically Xamarin for Android. So I am going to show you how to port these layouts back to Visual Studio. I do wish Visual Studio could provide the same capability, but with the Xamarin form as well as MAUI on the horizon, I doubt it's going to happen ever. So here I am offering a second best thing, a workaround, and it is very simple. The first step is for you to finish the layout design inside the Android Studio. And then you go to this uh, code panel. Copy the XML. You bring up the layout file here inside Visual Studio. Select the whole XML file and paste in the constraint layout. If you encounter this Build arrow. It is because the NuGet package is not up to date. Let's update them. And give it another build.
If you are binding the text or image to the resource, you might need to fix it up a little bit here. Now let's deploy the app. All right, guys, I hope you figured out what to master, what to learn, and what to avoid. Don't just take my word, play around it, get a conclusion of your own. And I hope you enjoyed it. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.